alhamdulillah auz billahi minash shaitani rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain wa ba'd asbahana wa asbaha al mulku lillahi al wahid al ahad as samad alladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'ana wa anfa'ana bima 'allamtana wa zidna 'ilma wa rsukna fahma wa ja'alna Allahumma fi ibadika as-salihin Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim today's topic is really a very interesting topic because we are talking about revival restoration of our dignity we lost part of our dignity and it has been quite a number of years the dignity muslims they had during the days of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the days of the sahaba is not the same as the one which we witness today of course uh, several things have happened and we need to see what exactly has gone wrong within the ummah itself and what are our responsibilities in the light of the quran whatever happens to this ummah in terms of losses or even gains we need to actually comprehend them in the light of the quran because the quran was revealed for us to succeed as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah taha a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim taha ma anzalna alaykal qur'ana litashqa illa tadhkiratan lima yaksha allah did not send the quran to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his umma to lead a miserable life in other words allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the quran for us to prosper for us to succeed for us to lead and not to the opposite which means that as long as the quran is there and it will always be there because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun indeed i'm the one who revealed the quran and it is me who will preserve it so allah has preserved the quran for us to lead the way for us to prosper for us to be the witnesses over mankind and the opposite is not permitted and there is no defeat in islam this has been made very clear in surah an-nisa when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes jihad and he says fa yuqtal aw yaglib fa sawfa nu'tihi ajran azima the one who participates in a jihad in a struggle any struggle fa yuqtal and he gets killed while he's in the struggle he doesn't give up aw yaglib or he defeats he succeeds which are give him a great reward which means that a believer does not accept defeat a believer is there to lead a believer is there to defeat his enemies and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also made it very clear in surah uh, chapter 6 that is uh, surah al-an'am that ma farratna fil kitab min shay that is aya 38 we have not left out anything from the book meaning that the quran has all the answers that we need whatever we face in this life the reference is the quran we should not look outside the quran that is where the solutions are and even what might have contributed to our failure is also clearly stated in the quran so this is why I want to cover these uh, you know uh, means or even if we say means to restoration of the dignity of the ummah and the ways to achieve it I want to cover it in the light of the Quran and Sunnah so what are those milestones I'll be sharing these slides 
And I will speak on the basis of the slides that I prepared, be in light Allah, getting into the details uh, of each of the points that I've uh, highlighted here. So uh, let me start with the first point here. I have written that this Ummah is very unique, very distinct from all the rest of the nations Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. We need to know our differences. What are the fundamental differences? What are our unique characteristics? And it is a duty of every one of us to preserve that uniqueness, to always ensure that we don't lose our uniqueness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, to a nation that is going to be assimilated. So meaning that we are not to be assimilated into other nations. If you do remember, we say that civilization at one point means a total of cultures, a total of cultures put together so when they become one culture, then it becomes a civilization. Today, people are saying that civilization is a culture that has been globalized. So it is a global culture, which means that there is only one culture. So when there's only one culture, then that is a civilization. We cannot have more than one civilization. And which civilization is that? That is the Western civilization, because the last letters, civilization, Z-A-T-I-O-N, indicate the going, ongoing process. So it is a process of getting the cultures together, assimilating them into one culture, which is the Western culture, in order to have one civilization, which is the Western civilization but we are not to be assimilated as i have made it very clear here later we are going to see that i will read all these slides so that i don't miss out any important point i'll start with this point that is highlighted our ummah is unique because it is described as a united ummah and our duty is to ensure that we remain united this unity, if it is to be accepted willingly, is considered a major sin in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٍ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخْوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَأَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ The meaning of this ayah is clear, and I'm not going to read it. All what I want from this ayah is a single brotherhood which means equa, they are a single brotherhood, so it is undivided. And we know what it means to have a single brotherhood. That can be a basis of so many things, and some of which I've indicated in these slides. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this ummah as a bunyanu marsus, and he says, inna allaha yuhibbu ladhina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi soffa, this ayah is not limited to jihad on the battlefield, jihad against the enemies, but any uh, achievement that we want to have, anything that we want to achieve, we are told to struggle together, to be together as a bunyanu marsus, meaning that assisting one another to ensure that we are undivided in any kind of cause, in whatever we endeavor to have, we need to struggle together. That is the message of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we need to ensure that we remain solid, and everybody knows what it means to be solid. Because when you're solid, you cannot easily be broken into pieces. It is a concrete structure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to describe us in this ayah. And he says, wa inna hazihi ummatukum ummatan wa hidatan wa ana rabbukum fattakun. In the same chapter, Surah Al-Mu'minun, he says, inna hazihi ummatukum ummatan wahida 
wa ana rabbukum fa'budun so allah has repeated the message twice in the same chapter indeed that is to put the emphasis that this nation of yours is one is one nation even though the translation is a single brotherhood but umma does not mean brotherhood umma means a nation of people of multicultures people of multi races but they come together and they live together harmoniously peacefully that is the meaning of umma and we saw that the meaning of civilization is when people of different cultures people with diverse uh, cultures races decide to get together for a common cause when they decided to come together to live together for a common cause then they become a civilization they become civilized why because they reach a level of maturity whereby they don't let the differences prevent them from achieving success they don't let the differences divide them and this is exactly what is happening to this ummah we come together despite the differences in order to achieve a common goal and allah says wa ana rabbukum fattaqun because of ibadah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we come together swala brings us together hajj brings us together so many things bring us together so not only that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described us as one but he has also provided the means to achieving that oneness so the means to achieving that oneness include as swala when we come together and that is why when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned the word for as salatul jamaa and he said that it is 27 times more than a swala performed individually this is because for a salatul jamaa we come together and there is a reward for getting together but when you pray alone you don't have the reward of getting together so it includes the reward of getting together because when we get together we are going to know one another we are going to assist one another and so on so again allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes and this is a command wa atasimu bi hablillahi jami'a an wala tafarraqu this is to ask us to get together meaning that to get together is a divine command we have no option but to respond to the call of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is to be together not to allow differences that are going to lead us to uh disunity and so on that again is very clear i will not dwell on that let us look at some of the hadith of rasul sallallahu wa sallam describing this umma before we look at the milestones rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam described this umma as a structure a single structure and each part is strengthening the other just like we talk about a building whereby each brick is actually strengthening the other so each one of us is a very important member of this umma and when there is any pain of course the pain will be felt by the whole body in a different hadith meaning that it is a single body whereby a pain that is probably uh, on a finger would be felt by the rest of the body and muslims will feel the pain that is felt by others they will not be able to sleep if they know that their brothers are suffering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the sahaba during jihad and mainly those who remained at home because they couldn't join jihad for some reasons and he says that you did not cross any valley neither did you climb any hill but they were with you he was describing the ones who remained at home meaning that they were not able to sleep thinking of you thinking of your safety and so on so that is exactly what is mentioned in the second hadith that we see here and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
again, uh, in the ayah that I've already read, that this ummah is one single ummah, of course, that oneness uh, is actually what makes us, uh, you know, uh, have the love towards one another, uh, being, you know, uh, together, living together in harmony, being generous to one another, and so on. And this hadith, which I've quoted here, is a very important one for one reason. That is because of the comment given by Anawawi, who has actually uh, commented on the hadith in Al Bukhari wa Muslim, as well as uh, hadith in other books. Rasul sallallahu wa sallam said, La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. Most of the time we understand this hadith to mean that a Muslim is not considered a believer until he loves for his fellow Muslim brother what he loves for himself. But Anawawi is of a different view. He believes that this hadith is not confined to Muslims. It means that what we love for ourselves is Islam. This is the greatest name given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has guided us. And there is no better blessing than guidance. So we love that guidance. And for this reason, we should love it for others. We shall not be able to reach that level of Iman described here until we invite others to what we love. So what we love is Islam, and we should invite those who are not Muslims to what we love. So because you are inviting them to what you love, then you will, of course, ensure that they understand what you are inviting to. And for this reason, you are going to use the hikmah, mawizwatun hasana, and mujadala billati here asan, as mentioned in the Quran, to ensure that they accept the message of Islam. And what will happen when they accept the message of Islam, it means that you are calling them to unity. So meaning that this ummah has a duty to unify humanity. To unify humanity means that you have to invite them to Islam because there is no way that they will be united unless they embrace Islam. So Islam is a religion that, that is calling us to unity. And when we invite others, we are inviting them to unity so that all mankind become one single brotherhood. This is the main objective of Dawa, calling people to that single brotherhood, calling them to the unity that we are describing. Now, the next that we see here is the ayah وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَا أُبَعْضُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ Allah has told us what shall happen in case we don't get united. What is going to happen? So he mentioned that we are going to end up in a great corruption in case we don't unite. And here is describing the disbelievers, Allazina Kafaru, they are Awliya Ubaab. They come together for a common cause. They come together when they want to defeat us. And because of that, they are able to defeat us because they get together. But when we divide ourselves, the message here is that we shall be defeated. So in order to defeat our enemies who have come together, we have to also get together. We have to ensure that we are united. Then we fight against our enemies. Otherwise, we shall always be defeated by the enemies. And this is our situation today. We are divided. We have been divided for a very long time. And it is the reason why we are being defeated. And Allah has described this Ummah. This is also part of its uniqueness as Ummatun Wasat, which has been interpreted differently. Some say that it is a nation that implements justice. Some say it is a nation that oversees other nations. Because the, the other part of the ayah is explaining it. 
litakunu shuhada ala nas so litakunu shuhada ala nas is taken to be the meaning of ummatun wasat a nation that is overseeing others what is it that it oversees of course this is mostly related to morality behavior how other nations are behaving and in order to do that we have to become the embodiment of those akhlaq the moral attributes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the quran so when we embody those attributes then we become the ummatun wasat a umma that is overseeing others because if this does not happen we cannot oversee them there will be no difference between us and them so to eradicate the evil we have to embody those characters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described in the quran and this ayah is also explaining it kuntum khayra umma uprijat lin nas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah so there are four things here regarding ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna 'anil munkar four things are implied ta'muruna bil ma'ruf it means that you do what is right you do what is right but you also command what is right so these are two duties to do what is right is a command and to command what is right is another command watanhauna anil munkar and you abstain from the evil is a command to do so and to prevent the evil is another command so there are four commands in these two statements tamuruna bil ma'rufi watanhauna anil munkar so we have to start with ourselves tamuruna nas bil birri watansauna anfusakum wa antum tatluna alkitaba afala taqilun so first we have to refine ourselves after we refine our character and we embody those good attributes praiseworthy uh, attributes in the quran mentions and we keep away from the vices then we call others to be like us we call them to al-ma'ruf and we abstain them from al-munkar so we have a moral responsibility to other nations and that is the meaning of being ummatun wasat a nation that has a moral responsibility to other nations now uh this is something that i have been talking about that we are a umma which is neither assimilated meaning that we are not to be assimilated and we should not allow to be assimilated into any nation because then we lose our identity and we are not part of other nations as indicated in the verses of red we are different from them we are not part of the yahud wa nasara we are not part of other nations we are distinct from other nations we have our identity and we need to keep that identity to remain unique at all time this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us and i'm going to look at the the purpose of our existence why do we exist as a umma the reason for our existence is iqamatu din iqamatu din and when we talk about din those who have read professor nakibul atas he said that tamadun a concept which is used for civilization originates from din which means religion so you cannot have a civilization without a din and if you want to have a civilization then you have to establish a din so iqama to din means iqama to al hadara establishment of a civilization simply refers to iqama to din which means to establish religion of islam so islam is safe being a religion is also a civilization because a civilization as we did see means that you know you are civilized 
it is more towards more values, more towards more values than material achievements. So what is mostly important to us are the more values. If we are to lose our belongings, the material possessions, that is not considered a great musiba. If we are to lose our akhlaq, that is considered a great musiba because the civilization is all about being civil. And being civil means that you, know, you maintain the good akhlaq. And I did quote one Egyptian scholar who said, Inna umamul akhlaqa ma bakiyat in zahabat akhlaqu hum zahabu. What makes nations great is their moral values. When they lose the moral values, they are considered gone. So civilization is all about moral values. Once those moral values are lost, the civilization is considered gone, even if we continue to have the structures, the tall buildings around us, even if we continue to succeed materially, we are not considered a civilization. So that is again one thing. This part is the most important part in this lecture that I'm delivering, which is the last lecture. Iqama to din is about what? And it is not achieved unless the following are achieved. It is a responsibility of every individual to do it. That is Iqama to din to establish the religion of Islam. It is also a collective responsibility, meaning that it has to be done at all levels. It has to be done at the individual level. It has to be done at the communal level. It has to be done at the global level. So every one of us is involved. The government is involved, organizations are involved, institutions of higher learning are involved, individuals are involved, the whole ummah is involved in this responsibility. And it includes the following. What are those to know about Islam? Because you not be able to establish something that you are ignorant of. So knowing about Islam, we all know that the first command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this nation is Iqra, read. That is the first step towards civilization. It is to read, to be literate, to have the knowledge. The first step towards Iqama to Deen, which is also Iqama to Hadara, establishment of a civilization, is to acquire knowledge. This is commanded on every one of us. Of course, we know all the ahadith in which the Prophet وسلم, clearly made it that talabul ilm faridatun ala kulli muslim. Seeking knowledge is a duty to be performed by every Muslim. So we have no option but to do it by all means, and this should be facilitated for everyone. The best probably we can do is to invest in knowledge. And the trip ID is doing it, investing in knowledge, sponsoring uh, books that are being written on different disciplines and so on. So this is exactly what we are talking about, to, to know about Islam being the first step to take for us to restore our dignity. Yes, our number is big today. We are one third of the world population. Muslims are one third of the world population. That is quite a big number. But not many of them know what Islam is all about. We perform Salah five times a day. We pay zakah. We fast. We go for Hajj but we are not aware of the objective of those things. Rasul sallallahu wasallam said, Buniyal Islam ala khams. Islam is constructed, constructed on five. And he did not say Islam are these five things. That Islam is established, the deen is established when you perform salah, you pay zakah, you fast, you go for hajj. He didn't say that. He said, Bunia, Islam is established, meaning that 
These are just foundations. Swala is a foundation of what? Zakah is a foundation of what? Hajj is a foundation of what? So they are to be treated as means leading to certain ends. And we need to be aware of those ends. If you are not aware of those ends, we shall not do what you call a karma to din. You will not be able to establish a din. So we go for swala to achieve what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear. He said that, وَأَقِمِ swala. Iqama to swala. Because iqama to swala is iqama to din. A swala to imadu din. The Prophet said the swala is the main pillar of a din. So when you establish it, if a man akama ha fakadi akama din, the one who establishes a swala is considered to have fulfilled what we call iqama to din. Waman hadama ha fakadi hadama din. And the one who breaks it, the one who doesn't do it, is considered to have destroyed a din. So iqama to swala is not just about performing swala, but is more than that. It includes getting together. That is for swala, getting together, remaining united. That is part of iqama to swala. But wa akimi swala inna swala tatanha anil fashai wal munka. Swala is there to prevent us from evils. Evils. So if Salah does not prevent a person from evils, it means he has not done what we call a karma to Salah. So we are performing Salah, but not every one of us is actually abstaining from those evils. And Zakah is there for what? Kuzumina amwali him swadaka tutwa hiru hum watu zaki him biha wa swali alayi him inna swalata kasaka nunahum. Zakat is there to purify us, to tawhiru hum. Hum means human beings, those who pay zakat. To zaki him, hum means human beings, not the, the money that is given. Zakat is a purifying wealth, yes, but that is not indicated in this ayah. What is indicated in this ayah is zakat to tawhiru hum. By the means of zakat, you purify them. So how do we get it purified? Of course, this is a subject that takes some time to explain, and I'm not going to go into it, but it's one of the objectives of paying zakah. And we first, to achieve what? La'allakum tatakun, taqwa. But we are lacking taqwa today as compared to the days of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Allah described in the Sahaba, as people of taqwa today we don't have that high level of taqwa we go for hajj for what again the objective is mentioned that whoever goes for hajj so there's no such things in hajj whatever is evil is to be avoided and not only during hajj even when we come back so these are the objectives, not just to perform, but to achieve those objectives. The karma to deen is not achieved unless we act upon the provisions as laid down in the Quran and Sunnah. Several provisions are there, and we have not yet fulfilled all. Allah has made it very clear. amara. He has not yet fulfilled what has been commanded on him. Yes, we have not yet fulfilled what Allah has commanded on us in order to be described as the best nation today. And it requires administration of the laws, to administer the laws, which again, we may not be, uh, you know, uh, described as being successful in doing so. And to call others to Islam, of course, with wisdom, in a bright manner, this is the dawah, is part of Iqamah to din to ensure that Islam remains triumphant, huh? triumphant and also strong at all time. Yes, Islam has to prevail. Why? Because Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it very clear, and Allah has made it very clear in this ayah, 
wala tahinu wala tahzan wa antum alaun in kuntum mu'minin the condition is also there wa antum alaun you'll be the dominant nation but the condition is in kuntum mu'minin if you retain your iman only if you retain your iman you'll be the dominant nation meaning that it is allah who makes you dominant once you fulfill the condition and that is part of the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this ummah to elevate it to uplift it to make it a leading nation provided it fulfills the condition this is a very important hadith it has been authenticated by the scholars including nasruddin al albani and it goes as you said rasul sallallahu wa sallam said al islam ya'lu wa la yu'la alayh islam is a progressive religion islam is a dominant religion it is not to be dominated it is not regressive we have to continue progressing and not to regress we have to continue leading other nations not to be led we have to continue dominating not to be dominated here it is our responsibility to ensure that we remain dominant to ensure that we are the leading nation this is very important also for us to uh, achieve but of course uh, this ayah is known to all of us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this ummah as a khairu ummah, the best of all nations. And what makes it the best is clearly mentioned here. Of course, there are different interpretations given by the scholars. Some say that the nation described here is the one uh, which existed during the time of the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam, and that is the Sahaba and not the subsequent ones. But of course, the ayah does not say it is limited to that particular group of people. We are the ones who are described as Khairu Ummah at all time, but provided that we perform this responsibility of Al-Amr bin Maharuf, Wa Nahayu Anil Munkar. If we don't do it and we lose our Iman, then we are not, again, before this, we saw the ayah that we are the Allah, we are the Allah, we are the ones who are dominant in Kuntum Mu'minun if we remain believers. And here also Iman is stated as a condition to fulfill. So when we lose it, it means that we shall not be uh, the leading nation. So I will not go beyond this slide. These are the milestones, means that if we want to restore our dignity, then we have to perform these duties acquiring the knowledge about islam in its entirety not just you know to study certain uh, disciplines and then we ignore the rest we know that islam is a religion that ensures the success for dunya and akhira and one of the du'as that we read is rabbana atina fi dunya hasana so uh, to attain hasana fi dunya, we need to, of course, study all the disciplines that will lead to hasana. If you are required to, to perform a particular duty, then whatever requires, whatever requires you to do, in order to achieve it, you have to do it. Meaning that all the means to achieving it are considered wajib. So if hasana requires us to study technology, then we have to do it. Because today you cannot do uh, dawah successfully unless you, you, you have the technology. Technology will help you to, to succeed in Dawa. You can reach people who are remote. 
just as we are doing right now, this is technology. We are able to reach many people who are far away. We need the technology. And that is part of the knowledge we need to acquire in order to do what we call a karma to din. Of course, it's sociology. You not be able to do that if you don't study sociology. You need to study about nations. And if you don't study psychology, how are you going to do that? You need to know the person you are going to call to Islam too. And that is part of hikmah. You need to know him. You need to understand his psychology. There are times when you may not uh, call him to certain things. Uh, so you need to know what is the right time for you to, to invite him to a particular uh, responsibility. And when should you not do so? That is part of psychology. So all these are required. They are part of the knowledge that we have to acquire in order to fulfill our responsibilities. So these are very clear. I don't need to dwell on this. I'll be ending here two minutes before time. And I would like to thank TripIT for organizing such a very important course. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it will continue to do so, to invest in knowledge, to benefit us. And I would like to thank all the participants in this program for your presence. Without your presence, I wouldn't be able to deliver. So it is through you that I get the reward of sharing knowledge. And for this reason, I have to thank you. Man la yashkuru nasa la yashkuru Allah, the one who does not appreciate people, does not appreciate Allah. First and foremost, we thank Allah who has made it possible. And I'm sorry in case I've not reached where you expected me to reach. Hopefully in future, we shall continue from where we have ended to cover more things. Bi'izinillahi ta'ala. Jazakumullahu kulla khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Kabuye, for um, your lecture. And it is very important, you, you, you said that implementing Islam, ikamatul ad-din, I mean, we, there is a responsibility of individual and society. You want to establish this. Is that right, Dr. Dr. Kabuye? Uh, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And a lot of people feel that they lose their wealth. It's a musibah, as you said. But if you should not lose your akhla and iman. Huh? <laughs> Some people they commit suicide and so on because of losing their wealth. The, yeah, they lose their from the musibah and then going to another musibah. So they lose two, they got two musibah in this world and they have to. Yeah. So thank you very much that we wrap up uh, your 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 lecture today and let for the whole week which uh, for the whole of six weeks alhamdulillah and i was looking at the um, uh, the the chat box if there are any any questions so far because uh, you have about one or two more minutes uh, which you finish on time i don't know who is uh, asking this question the interrelationship between the uh, you look at the chat box uh, uh, the relationship between Islam and civilization in the modern society. Uh, maybe, maybe he is asking a question. Uh, so it can be internet. Uh, he is asking about what are the interrelationship between Islam and civilization in the modern society. Inshallah, that is a very good question. Actually, I've just completed my book, which is uh, which has been sponsored by TripIT on interconnectedness of knowledge and civilization. So uh, I have covered that. Oh. Hopefully, inshallah, when the book is published soon, inshallah, mm -hmm. TripIT will, of course, make it available for all of us. Okay. So inshallah, you read the book and see the interconnectedness. Inshallah, inshallah. Inshallah. Maybe you can share one one small 
part of the book to be to the group. <laughs> yes, to exactly, answer, exactly. answer this question, <laughs> one small chapter, one small part of it. We we a paragraph or a chapter. So okay, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you. I will leave it to you, Dr. Kabaye. Yeah, yeah, inshallah, inshallah, I'll do that. I'll be very glad, of course. Yeah. Uh, I wish that I still had uh, some time for me to to explain. I can see my brother, Dr. No, he's already here. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I don't want to, I don't want to steal his time. So that will yeah. be a, a, a major scene. So inshallah okay. next time. Okay.